So, you know, one day Mrs. Cotter says to Dave, hey, you know, Marcy told me about this great family, the Rips. Right? They have a beautiful, intelligent daughter named Michelle who, who lives in Hoboken. Um, you know, would it be okay if we tried to set you guys up on a date? And Dave was like, yeah, absolutely, but like, of course, give me the digits, right? We'll get this going. And, uh, and then Mrs. Rip had a conversation with Michelle. And she was like, hey, you know, Marcy told me about this great family, the toddlers, right? And uh, they have a handsome, intelligent son named Dave, works in the city, lives in Hoboken. You know, would you be interested in maybe going out on a date? And she was like, uh, no. <laughs> she was like, I'm not going to go out on a date with a guy just because he happens to live in the same town. <laughs> and in her defense, uh, she had been suffering from what I would call blind date fatigue. Right, so a bunch of blind dates that didn't really go that well, so you can't blame her, but uh, a bit more pressure from her mom and Marcy, and she's like, all right, fine, get my number. So Dave gets the number, right, picks up the phone, gives her a call, and she doesn't pick up, right, he leaves a voicemail. And uh, by this point, uh, he had Facebook stalked her, so he knew that she was gorgeous, and he was pretty excited to hear back from her. Um, but, you know, minutes turned into hours, right, hours turned into a day, and he was like, whatever, right, you know, it's, she'll call me. <laughs> like, you know, uh, a day turns into two. He's like, guy, oh, she's busy, right? She's busy. She'll go back to me. Um, you know, two turns into three. Now he's starting to worry. He's like, uh, all right. Three turns into four. He's like, I forget about it. She's not coming back. This is it. It's over. But on that fourth day, Michelle actually texted him back and said, uh, hey, sorry I didn't get back to you. I've been super busy getting ready to, you know, travel to Europe with my sister. Maybe we can get together, uh, you know, when I get back. Needless to say, Dave wasn't all that optimistic that that date <laughs> was actually going to take place. However, right, upon Michelle's return from Europe, she, uh, you know, she reached out to Dave, uh, and they got together for their first date in Hoboken at a bar called Marty O'Brien's, right, where, fittingly so, they, they shared their first beer. And, uh, and now <laughs> we're here. Right? So, that worked out pretty well, right? <laughs> so thank you, moms, and, and thank you, Marcy, for bringing our two lovers together. All right. And uh, speaking of the moms, I'd like to invite Mrs. Rip up for our first reading. Love is a temporary madness. It erupts like volcanoes and then subsides. And when it subsides, you have to make a decision. You have to work out whether your roots have so entwined together that it is inconceivable that you should ever part because this is what love is. Love is not breathlessness, it is not excitement, it is not the promulgation of eternal passion. That is just being in love, which any fool can do. Love itself is what is left over when being in love has burned away, and this is both an art and a fortunate accident. Those that truly love have roots that grow towards each other underground, and when all the pretty blossoms have fallen from the branches, they find that they are one tree and not two. Thank you, Mr. Uh, for our second reading, I'd like to invite you to Kyle. Hello, everyone. When, when things in your lives seem almost too much to handle, when 24 hours in a day are not enough, remember the mayonnaise and two cans of beer. Uh, very appropriate. But a professor stood before his philosophy class and had some items in front of him. When class began, he wordlessly picked up a very large and empty mayonnaise jar and proceeded to fill it with golf balls. He then asked the students if the jar was full. They agreed that it was. The professor then picked up a box of pebbles and poured them into the jar. He shook the jar lightly. The pebbles rolled into the open areas between the golf balls. He then asked the students again if the jar was full. They agreed it was. The professor next picked up a box of sand and poured it into the jar. Of course, the sand filled up everything else. He asked once more if the jar was full. The students responded with a unanimous yes. The professor then produced two cans of beer from under the table and poured the entire contents into the jar effectively filling the empty space between the sand. And the students laughed. Now, said the professor, as the laughter subsided, I want you to recognize that this jar represents your life. The golf balls are the important things. Your family, your children, your health, your friends. 
and your favorite passions. And if everything else was lost and only they remained, your life would still be full. The pebbles are the other things that matter, like your job, your house, and your car. The sand is everything else, the small stuff. If you put the sand into the jar first, he continued, there's no room for the pebbles or the golf balls. The same goes for life. If you spend all your time and en energy on the small stuff, you'll never have room for the things that are important to you. Pay attention to those things that are critical to your happiness. Play with your children and grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Take time to get medical checkups. Take your spouse out to dinner. Play another 18. There'll always be time to clean the house and fix the garbage disposal. Take care of the golf balls first, the things that really matter. Set your priorities. The rest is just saying. One of the students then raised her hand and inquired, what did the beer represent? The professor smiled. I'm glad you asked. It just goes to show, no matter how full your life may seem, there's always room for a few beers with a friend. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Collar. All right, so Dave, Michelle, you guys have spent uh, a lot of time and energy over the past couple of months uh, stressing over your vows. <laughs> I know because I reviewed them. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, and you know, from from a from a vow perspective, it's <laughs> you're making me laugh. <laughs> no, but, it, but but seriously, I mean. While you might forget what you say, right, a year, two, or three from now, right, writing them truly is a worthwhile exercise, right? Because while time keeps on ticking, right, and life flies by in the blink of an eye, right, it's so important to stop from time to time just to realize you know, how much better your partner makes life worth living. All right, so with that being said, are you guys ready to uh, share your vows? All right, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, it was just about four years ago that I was giving my friends the scoop on the new guy I was seeing. If I remember correctly, my response was something along the lines of, I don't know, I guess I'll see what happens. <laughs> Around that same time, you showed up for dinner at my apartment with a bouquet of flowers because we had met one month ago on that day. Clearly, I underestimated how serious things were getting. It's no secret that while you were open and willing to being set up on a blind date, I initially refused to be set up with you. In my defense, who wants to be set up by their mom? <laughs> this will always be my biggest regret. If I had known that coming home to you each night would be my favorite part of my day, that binge watching TV shows together on a Friday night would be something I look forward to all week, and that I would come to love your family and friends as my own, I never would have second guessed me to you for a drink. I knew very early on that I wanted to marry you. I never believed people when they said, when you know, you know, but that's exactly what happened. As soon as we spent more time together, it seemed like you were too good to be true. Someone that was genuinely kind and thoughtful and wasn't afraid to show me and tell me how you felt about me. I always wondered who I would marry and how our relationship would be. I never imagined that I would find everything I was looking for in one person. You understand me like no one else has and make me feel truly comfortable with being myself. I appreciate that you mildly put up with my complaining and sometimes laugh at my bad jokes. I love that you send me pictures of puppies and get excited about a trip to ShopRite or Trader Joe's. <laughs> I love how excited we both are when we snag the money spot when we're parking the car. <laughs> but most of all, I love that you never make me doubt that we're in this thing together. I promise to never stop exploring new mountains with you as long as my knees hold out, and to always go halvesies with you when we're ordering food. I promise that I'll always be willing to travel new places, eat new foods, drink new beers, and make the most out of our lives together. I promise to cook dinner with you every night and will try not to complain so much about making lunch for work the next day. I reluctantly admit that I know you're right when you suggest we make something healthy for dinner, even when you know all I want is pizza or chicken parm sandwich. <laughs> I promise to never take you for granted, and even if I don't always say it, I appreciate, appreciate every little thing you do. When I tell you that I love you, I don't say it out of habit. I say it to remind you that you're the best thing that ever happened to me. I love you so much. Okay. <laughs> so, I don't 
think I need to tell everybody here how lucky I am, given that you're on board with getting married at a, at a place like this. <laughs> so clearly we have a lot of things in common. We're very similar people, and I feel very fortunate that uh, as a couple, there's a lot of so, so many things that we can enjoy together. So beyond beer, uh, <laughs> uh, just to name a few. So number one, you already mentioned it. Just I love cooking a good meal with you even if we're undecided <laughs> as to what to make. Um, I love enjoying the outdoors and going for a hike with you. Uh, I love traveling the world with you, but also equally just enjoy relaxing on the couch. I love that we all too often seem to dress similarly. <laughs> uh, e <laughs> even if it means you yelling at me, I need to go change my shirt. <laughs> um, and I'm sorry that you're a Jets fan, but I'm glad that we could be miserable together on that kind of release. And given how similar we are, perhaps it's no surprise that we both had our bachelor and bachelorette parties in Austin as well. <laughs> uh, uh, separate weekends for anyone wondering. <laughs> um, so while, while we share so many things in common, I think it's the, the subtle differences between us, however minute, that really helps make me the best version of myself. And the last uh, four plus years now have been amazing and uh, I, re I really look forward to all the things that are in the future for us as, as husband and wife. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, you're my best friend, I love you, I promise to always be there for you in the good times and the bad and for the times when you're not there, I promise to not watch the next episode without you. <laughs> And uh, I look forward to our journey together as husband and wife. Right. And uh, now for the exchanging of the rings. Seth may have uh, Michelle's ring. All right, Dave, please take Michelle's ring. Place it on her finger and repeat after me. <laughs> I give you this ring as a sign I choose you. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, we can repeat re one more time. Restart. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty then. Um, I give you this ring as a sign I choose you. I give you this ring as a sign I choose you. To be my love, my partner, and my best friend. To be my love, my partner, and my best friend. Wear it, think of me, and know that I love you. Wear it, think of me, and know that I love you. Seth, Dave's ring, please. Michelle, please take Dave's ring, place it on his finger, and repeat after me. <laughs> 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 I give you this ring as a sign I choose you. I give you this ring as a sign I choose you. To be my love, my partner, and my best friend. To be my love, my partner, and my best friend. Wear it, think of me, and know that I love you. Wear it, think of me, and know that I love you. Alright. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you got enough room there, dude? <laughs> All right, well, it is my pleasure now to say that, uh, you know, with the power vested in me as your friend, and in uh, accordance with the state of New Jersey, <laughs> I now pronounce you husband and wife. Awesome.